very good Sunday morning to you. Welcome to Ebenezer Baptist Church for our morning worship. It is very good to see each and every one of you this day. As we begin our worship, I'd like to invite you to stand as you are able. And as we begin our worship, we're going to start off with singing. So if you could, the name of Jesus, take the name of Jesus with you. It should be in the middle insert. As soon as you open up the middle, take the name of Jesus with you. Love. 
can say amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated at this time. What a wonderful prayer to begin with this morning for Jesus to shine and fill this land with the Father's glory. It can happen by Jesus shining through you. In our announcements this morning, Carrie is not here. I'll be doing the announcements. He is on vacation today. And just a few announcements. Uh, we'll be having a family movie night on September 18th at 7 p.m. in the gym. More details about this are in your bulletin. Also, not in your bulletin, but something you need to know is we're going to try to roll back some of our services over the coming weeks. Prayerfully, we'll have Sunday school next Sunday morning. Uh, we'll give you more details uh, through the all call and on the um, website. It's not up yet, but hopefully this week we'll have it there. Just to let you know that prayerfully we'll start back Sunday school next week. We'll also start back um, Children's Church next week for the second service. And Julie told me this morning that this Wednesday night we'll be having children's services for our children. Okay, so Wednesday night we'll be having all of our services back online. And one last request or announcement, uh, handbells begin September 20. If you have any questions, talk to Brother Kenny. Yes, Laura, uh, you can help me out with this. Um, for our Christmas project, we need children's clothes, children's toys, and housewares. So if you uh, can start gathering those things, that would be wonderful. Ebenezer it's uh, it's wonderful that no matter what is going on outside these walls that we get to come inside these walls and we get to praise and we get to worship and hopefully as best we can as best we know how we get to exalt the name of Jesus amen but uh, this morning we come to the time when we have our, our prayer for our service so if you would please pray with me. Father God, Lord, I do thank you for your holiness. Lord, I thank you for your son. Lord, in your great love that you sent, Father, as atonement for us. Lord, that we may believe on him. Father, and that we may have eternal life. And Father, the we that have eternal life, Father, Lord, you have given us a command. And that is go and tell. And Lord, I just pray that we would share the greatest news that mankind has ever received is the, the sacrifice on the cross. Lord, and, and not only the cross, but the empty tomb. Father, the resurrection of Jesus that's already happened, that death has been conquered and we may have life with him, Father, forever. And Lord, I just pray that we would live and that we would speak and that we would walk as those who have been bought with a price, Lord, that we know that we're not our own. And Father, I just pray that as we gather here today, Lord, that you would speak to us. Father, that we would have open ears, that we would have open hearts. Father, for your message, that we would be better equipped to be servants for thy kingdom. And Lord, as we leave here, Father, that we would take up our cross. Lord, that we would take up the command that you've given us once again to go and tell others about the great love, the saving grace and mercy and love of Jesus Christ. Father, just go with us, continue to teach us and instruct us and forgive us where we failed thee and all these things we ask in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. scripture this morning from the Holy Scriptures. Would you please stand as you are able? 
We'll be reading from Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, Jesus had just finished healing a whole lot of people in a whole lot of circumstances, including the centurion's daughter. And then he had talked to the, the uh, disciples and others about the cost of following him. And then in verse 23, and when he got into the boat, he was getting ready to cross the sea. And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. A windstorm arose on the sea so great that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. And when they went and woke him up, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, you of little faith? And he got up and he rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a dead calm. They were amazed, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? May God bless the reading of his word this day for us, God's people. Could we continue in our worship, singing out loud with all our heart? We have heard the joyful sound that Jesus saves. In your answer, we have heard. People need the Lord. It's on the back page when you flip over right there. Not too many words. You'll remember this one anyway. message from God's Word this day. If you have your Bible, we are in Ezekiel chapter 33. Once outside a small village, a circus set up for a night of shows. 
after one night at about three in the morning after all the crowds had left the circus to go home to sleep an elephant knocks over a lantern setting the circus on fire it spreads to the forest and the way the wind was blowing it was destined to consume the village in its path one lone clown dressed in a clown outfit ran down to the village to warn those sleeping in that village that a fire is coming so he runs to the village and he honks his horn and he begins to yell warning the people fire is on its way run save your lives fire is coming and the people who had gathered at their windows began to clap and throw money at the clown thinking it was some type of performance some kind of comedic skit but the clown says this is no joke if you don't get out of town you're gonna die and again the people laughed and said to themselves what a funny clown and they went back to bed at four in the morning fire reached the village and no one lived why the people of that village did not take seriously the warnings of a clown many people today do not take seriously God's Word and the preaching of God's Word even though those who share God's Word their goal is to warn and save lives too many people hear it or see those who share the gospel as clowns let's be honest People who could see me today in a suit sharing the gospel see me, many of them, as a clown. Now that's what we expect from a lost world. But I'm afraid that a similar approach happens among God's people. Too many believers do not take seriously the message from God's word. And this, church, is a grave danger. There was a people in God's Word who gathered and they heard, Thus saith the Lord. But they dismissed the Word of God. They gathered to see it just as entertainment. We're going to look this morning at Ezekiel 33 at a bad example. But from the bad example, we can learn the right attitude we must have in approaching God's Word and the preaching of God's Word. Let's begin in prayer. Father God, we come before you this morning. We are thankful to be in your house, gathered in your name to worship you. You, O oh Lord, speak. You always speak. Speak to us today. Open our ears. Open our hearts. Move our feet. God, I pray today that we put aside seeing this place that we are in this moment in time and look above to you, the holy God, who longs and calls us to yourself. May we be drawn to you this morning. If there's anybody here that does not know you as their Lord and Savior, draw them to the cross of Calvary. And for every believer today, I pray upon hearing your word, they draw nearer to you. God, unto you be all glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. We will be examining portions of Ezekiel 33. But for us to understand the text, we must understand the context. The book of Ezekiel is written by Ezekiel. He does not write this book in Jerusalem. In fact, he's not even in Israel at any point as he writes this. He 
is far away. God's word says in Ezekiel chapter 1 that he is by the Cherber River in southeast Babylon. Why is he there? Because he was taken captive. He was in Judah, but he had been taken with the first captives to Babylon. Forcefully taken from his home and marched away to a land far, far away. Now, as he begins to prophesy in Babylon, there are still many of his countrymen, his fellow Jews, still in Judah, still in Jerusalem. And Ezekiel prophesies that God is not pleased with Judah or Jerusalem and that God will bring destruction and the sword to Jerusalem. He does so in many places in Ezekiel. But we're going to look at one where he prophesies against Judah and Jerusalem. Ezekiel 5. I want to read 5 through 10. It says, Thus says the Lord God, This is Jerusalem. I have set her in the midst of the nations and the countries all around her. She has rebelled against my judgments by doing wickedness more than the nations and against my statutes more than the countries that are all around her. For they have refused my judgments and have not walked in my statutes. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Because you have multiplied disobedience more than the nations that are all around you, have not walked in my statutes nor kept my judgments, not even done according to the judgments of the nations that are all around you. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Indeed I, even I, am against you, and will execute judgments in your midst in the sight of the nations. And I will do among you what I have never done and the like of which I will never do again because of all your abominations we'll stop there God has spoken against Jerusalem because they have rebelled against their God and God will execute judgments against these people unlike at any time before as we're going to see This judgment in chapter 5 will come to pass in 33. So let's go ahead and move over to Ezekiel 33, verse 21. It says, And it came to pass in the twelfth year of our captivity, in the tenth month, on the fifth day of the month, that one who had escaped Jerusalem came to me and said, The city has been captured. So the first captives and Ezekiel, after they have been in captivity 12 years, an escapee from Jerusalem makes their way to Babylon, says to Ezekiel, Jerusalem is captured. Ezekiel then prophesies further, and it's far worse against captive Jerusalem. Verse 27. Say thus to them, thus says the Lord God, As I live, surely those who are in the ruins shall fall by the sword. And the one who is in the open field I will give to the beast to be devoured. And those who are in the stronghold and caves shall die in pestilence. For I will make the land most desolate. Her arrogant strength shall cease. And the mountains of Israel shall be so desolate that no one will pass through. Then they shall know that I am the Lord when I have made the land most desolate because of all their abominations which they have committed. The Lord says through Ezekiel that it's going to be far worse for Judah. It will become desolate. Destruction will come to an arrogant people who thought they were strong without God. But when all is said and done, they will know that God is God, mighty in power. So at this point in time, God is speaking to Ezekiel to give a message to the people. What we are about to read 
is God speaking to Ezekiel about the people he's prophesying to. Verse 30 says, As for you, son of man, the children of your people are talking about you beside the walls and in the doors of the houses. And they speak to one another, everyone saying to his brother, Please come and hear the word that is coming from the Lord. God tells Ezekiel, everyone in the city, they're talking about you. As they're speaking to their neighbor, they're talking about your messages, your prophecies. And they're all saying, hey, you got to come here, Ezekiel. Come on down and hear his prophecy. It's amazing. Now, that sounds good, correct? However, as we're about to see, Many people who are hearing Ezekiel are doing so for the wrong reason. Verse 31, God says, so they come to you as people do. They sit before you as my people, and they hear your words, but they do not do them. For with their mouths they show much love, but their hearts pursue their own gain. God tells Ezekiel, the people gather, they sit before you. They hear you when you speak. But these people are not fear or filled with the fear of God. God's word is not leading these people to do as God commanded. Let's read verse 32. Well, let's back up and look at 31 again. It says. With their mouths, they show much love, but their hearts pursue their own gain. These people that have gathered to hear Ezekiel, they're saying wonderful things. They're speaking well with their mouths, but it's just a show. It's just an act. They're not concerned about God. They're not concerned about God's people. It says here they're concerned about themselves. Looking for some kind of gain for themselves verse 32 says indeed you are to them as a very lovely song who of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument for they hear your words but they do not do them God tells Ezekiel that he is to these people like one who sings a lovely song all he is is entertainment to them. I can be honest about this. When I was a teenager, I used to go to some concerts. And I'll be honest with you, every concert I went to, I didn't go to hear the message the person was singing about. I went to be entertained. <laughs> I didn't care about his opinion or her opinion. I didn't care what they were actually saying in the song. I just wanted to be entertained. I wanted to enjoy a show. That's what's going on here. The people have gathered, but they're treating God's Word as a show. They're not heeding the message of God. Verse 33. And when this comes to pass, surely it will come. Then they will know that a prophet has been among them. God says to Ezekiel, take heart when it's all said and done. There will be a people that know that when Ezekiel walked the earth, that a prophet was with them. As we sit here today, Christian, we're blessed. We have something wonderful. We have the Word of God, the Bible. And God speaks today. He speaks through His Word today. And I stand here to proclaim the Word of God. So what can we take from this bad example in Ezekiel 33 to help us to have a right attitude and a right heart to listen when we hear the Word of God in the year 2020? I've got four criteria that can be drawn from Ezekiel 33. And to help us remember, we'll refer to body parts. Heart, mouth, ears, 
first criteria, heart. We must have a receptive heart. Let's read verse 31. So they come to you as people do. They sit before you as my people. And they hear your words, but they do not do them. For with their mouths they show much love, but their hearts pursue, pursue their own gain. They hear, but they do not do, because their hearts are wrong. What does this mean for us today? I want to give you a modern day illustration of what's going on here that uh, is over the top and outlandish, but I believe you'll get the point. Let's imagine we can go back in time a little bit. I know we don't want to do that this year as much, but imagine we go back to February of this year. And imagine there's two men watching the television, watching the news. And the news is saying that there's this virus that's blazing in China and that it's taking lives and the people on the broadcast says this virus is destined to come here and take much life. Imagine that one of those men are sitting there taking it all in and tears are streaming down his face. He knows that this virus that is coming to America is going to bring a lot of pain, a lot of heartache and death. That's one man's response to this message. But the second man, he's excited. Why is he excited? He owns stock in a toilet paper company and a mask making company. When he hears of this virus coming, he's hearing cha-ching. I'm going to be making me some money. He's not concerned about people. He's seeing an opportunity to make money at someone else's expense. Hear me, that's what's happening right here. In verse 31, the people that are hearing this news, they see they're going to get some gain from somebody else's pain. That's why they're there. They're not concerned that people are going to die. They're looking to line their own pockets, some kind of gain. These people's hearts are wrong. Instead of hearing a message of the wrath of God and being filled with fear, they treat it selfishly, looking for their own gain. They were not receptive to the message of God. Now, how does this apply to us today? Many ways. But as we approach God's Word, we must approach it with a right heart, ready to receive whatever it is God says. Sometimes when you go to the Word, God comforts you and He encourages you. When that time comes, let Him do so. But sometimes when you go to the Word, He convicts you. He shows you your sin and calls you to repent. When God shows you and He convicts you, you've got to make a change and obey the Word of God. For us to correctly hear God, we must be ready and willing to receive it with the right heart. Point two, mouth. We must have a truthful mouth. What do I mean by this? I'm a former youth pastor. I've seen a lot of teens through the years that they were real loose with their words concerning love and I mean romantic love they would say I love you way too easily I have seen this in my years as a youth pastor I have seen a boy meet a girl at a youth event and says I love you the first day he meets her doesn't even know her name but can say I love you I have seen um, a teen go out on his first date. On his first date with this girl, he says, I love you. The relationship doesn't even make it a week. And I've seen a boy play some girls that on a youth retreat that he tells three different girls, I love you, you're the only girl for me. I 
I've seen a lot of people play fast with using the words, I love you to others. Now, I could scoff at this. But if I look back on my past, I've not been completely perfect myself. I have only told two ladies that I love them romantically in my life. Only two. And I lied on one of them. Why? How did I lie? Well, I dated this girl many, many years ago. And we dated for a few weeks, and she said, I love you. What do you say to that? I said, okay. <laughs> and just went on. Now, after about two more weeks of her saying, I love you, she expanded that. She says, I love you. Do you love me? Again, what do you say to that? I, I couldn't say it, so I didn't. This did not make her happy. So after weeks of her putting pressure on me and me feeling guilty, one day I looked her in the eye and said, I love you too, but I lied. I said words of love when there was no love in my heart toward her. I lied. Verse 31. So they come to you as people do. They sit before you as my people, and they hear your words, but they do not do them, for with their mouth they show much love. These people had gathered to hear God's word proclaimed. And they used loving language toward God. However, they were lying. They had the right words, but a wrong heart. And there's a message found here for us today. We must be truthful what we say to God and what we sing to God. For truthfulness is what God desires from us. What do I mean? I'll, I'll give another bad example on me. I was raised in church, being in church every Sunday, and I loved to sing. I loved to sing. When I was a teenager, there was nothing more I loved to do than to sing in church. But I remember one Sunday night singing this song, Wherever He Leads, I'll Go. And I was belting it out because I loved that song. But in the middle of the song, God spoke to me, and He said this. Do you mean what you just sang? Did you think about the words that left your lips? And right there in the pew, God was convicting me. And I had to answer truthfully. And the answer was no. I had sung that entire song without thinking about what I was saying to God. But here's what I did in that pew. I said, God, I came into this church not meaning those words, but I leave here tonight meaning those words. Wherever you, you lead me, God, I'll go, because I'm yours. Hear me. If your heart's not right with God, your words are going to come out wrong. If your heart's not right with God, the words are going to come out wrong. Make sure that right words of praise come from a right heart towards God. Which leads us to point three. We need to have ears to listen. Ears to to listen let's look at verse 32 it says indeed you are to them as a very lovely song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument for they hear your words but they do not do them these people could hear Ezekiel in fact they're entertained by the message of Ezekiel but they were not hearing what God had to say. Oh, they thought Ezekiel was a show. They missed the message of God. They heard, but they didn't listen. It, you know, in this sanctuary, there's a lot of things you can hear. You can hear the rustle of people turning pages in the Bible, an occasional sneeze, an occasional cough. Maybe you can hear the, uh, the air running. Maybe you can hear birds outside. There's a lot of things you can hear as you sit here, right? There's only one thing that's important to hear when we enter the house of God, and that's the voice of God. God is speaking here today. The question is, are we listening? 
Will you walk away today and say, the music this morning was good, but Bob was a little off? Or will you say, God spoke to me during our time of praise. God spoke to me through the reading of his word. God spoke to me through the message of God. Hear me, God is always speaking. We're not always listening. Make sure that we have ears, not to hear minutia around us, but to hear the voice of God. Which leads us to four feet. May your feet follow faithfully, or what God says, do it. The great composer Mendelssohn once went to a cathedral in Freresburg, Germany, to play on a world-famous organ, and he had received written permission from its pastor. But as he enters the cathedral, the organist was jealous of the great composer Mendelssohn. So when Mendelssohn asked to play the organ, the organist says, no, he refuses to let Mendelssohn play because he was jealous. Mendelssohn then produces the written permission from the pastor to play. Again, the organist refuses to let Mendelssohn play. But then a person in authority prevailed upon the organist to allow Mendelssohn to play the organ. And the organist stubbornly allowed Mendelssohn to play. And oh, how Mendelssohn can play. He was a world-class organist. And he sat and played on that organ. What he played was majestic, grand, powerful, beautiful. The organist sat there amazed. And tears began to fill the organist's eyes as he listened to Mendelssohn. He goes up behind Mendelssohn, lays his hand on his shoulder and says, To think I have refused a master to have the touch of this organ. Christian, when God speaks to us and we refuse to obey, we are refusing our master to have his touch in our lives. We're refusing to have him work in and through us as he directs. Let's read verse 32 again. Indeed, you are to them as a very lovely song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear your words, but they do not do them. This was a people that heard, but did not do. It is dangerous to hear the voice of God and refuse to obey, for you are refusing the master's touch in your life. James 1, 2, 22 says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Christian, when God speaks to you, obey. Whenever God speaks to you, do not ignore, put off, or make excuses. Listen be quick to obey and let the master have his touch in your life we have just completed a small study of an obscure passage from Ezekiel but it has a powerful message for how we are to respond to the word of God and when God speaks four things heart have a receptive heart two mouth may your mouth be truthful Three, ears. May your ears not just hear, but listen when God speaks. And four, feet. May your feet be willing to go where God leads you. I'm going to have you musicians come forward. Again, we're not at a time where we can have a conventional altar call. But we want to ask you to stand.
Let's pray. Father God, you spoke to a people through Ezekiel a little less than 3,000 years ago. You still speak today. God, your presence is with us today. It's where it says in your word where two or three are gathered together in your name. Your presence. God, I pray that you speak to each heart today. Whatever it is that you must do in us, work in us so that we can allow you to work through us. God, we are in awe of your power. We are in awe of your might. We are in awe of who you are compared to who we are. But though you are large and the maker of the entire universe, you care for each of us here. We humbly submit ourselves to you. God, unto you be our glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. To close out this service, this was not a salvation message. However, if God is speaking to you today, drawing you to Jesus and you're like how do I come and accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior there's nothing more I would love to share than that with you so at any point in time you come talk to me I would love to tell you about this glorious Savior named Jesus but for everybody else here I want to ask you just to bow your heads and close your eyes and I want you to think for a moment four keys to responding to God. Heart, mouth, ears, feet. If you're here today and there's no looking around, this is just between you and God. God has spoke to you today and He's shown you that right now you've got a heart problem. That your heart's not where it needs to be with God. But you hear Him and you're willing to say, Lord, change my heart. If that's you this morning, would you just raise your hand so I can pray? I see that. All right. If you're here this morning, and maybe your thing is the mouth. Maybe you sit through services all the time and you sing songs all the time, but you pay no attention to the words you're saying. You say great things, you mouth, you sing great things, but your mind and your heart is a million miles from God. Your mouth is not matching the words you've been saying. But you want to say, Lord, I want to give you my mouth. If that's you right now, would you raise your hand? God sees those hands. If you're here today, and maybe your issue is listening, it's not that you've not been hearing God. It's that you've not been doing what He's told you to do. But you want to end that today. You want to say, Lord, what you say, I want to do. I want to live what you're calling me to do. I want to have your touch in my life. If that's you today, would you raise your hand? God sees those hands. I want to pray for you this morning. Father God, we come before you. And for all those who raised hands and for all those who didn't, but they want to draw closer to you, God, I pray that they give first their heart, which will change their mouth, which will open their ears and direct their walk. Go with them, Lord. As we walk through these trying times that we are in, we leave here knowing we don't walk alone. God, I pray that we leave here today and we do as one of our songs that we sang says, that we shine, Jesus shine through us. God, unto you be all glory, honor, and praise. In the name of Christ Jesus we pray, amen. Brother Kenny. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Sunday.